Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to our RuneScape 2007 Herb Farming Guide. I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of information on what I think you need to know about growing and harvesting herbs. Then I'm going to show you guys what a typical herb run might look like. We're going to jump right into this everybody. Let's go over how herbs work. You can grow herbs in an herb patch, which there are currently seven to use that I'll be going over a little bit later. To plant the herb in the patch, it first needs to be weeded. Weeds can grow in a patch that doesn't have anything else growing in it, but you can easily rake them away. And once the patch is empty, you can plant the seeds using a seed dibber. After that, they're going to grow into some herbs in 80 minutes or 4 cycles of 20 minutes if that's how you want to look at it. Your plants can get diseased and die, but I will hit up on that later. This turns out to be a pretty good moneymaker for many different kinds of herbs, depending on the prices, of course. There are currently 7 herb patches that can be used to grow herbs. Clearly, the more patches you use, the more money and XP you can get. I personally only use 5 patches at the moment due to not having enough quests done, and it still turns out to be a great AFK moneymaker. The first patch in no real order is south of Falador. The quickest way to get there is with an explorer's ring, but a Falador teleport or using a glory to get your Draenor village are reasonable options. There are no special requirements for this patch. The second patch is north of Ardoin. Also with no special requirements to use, the Ardoin cloak is the best way to get there, but an Ardoin teleport or a Camelot teleport really does bring you within running range. The third patch is in northern Catherby. Also, no special requirements to use this patch, the easiest way to get there is with a Camelot Teleport. Our fourth patch is east of Canifus. You are going to need to have completed Priest and Peril to have access to this area. The closer teleports to the spot all have other requirements too, the quickest one being the Ectophil, which is a reward from Ghosts Ahoy. This is definitely the one you want to use, but Slayer Rings can take you to the nearby Slayer Tower, and Fairy Rings could teleport you into the Haunted Woods with the code ALQ, but you want to be careful because there are some vampires there that could deal some decent damage. The fifth patch is on top of Trollheim. The best way to get there is with a Trollheim teleport. This patch does require the completion of My Arm's Big Adventure quest. But as a bonus, your herbs cannot die in this patch from disease. The sixth patch is on Harmony Island. This patch really isn't used that often because it requires not only the Great Brain Robbery to be completed, but the Elite Mortania Diaries as well, and Elite Diaries are really not that easy. The quickest way to get here is with the Harmony Island Teleport. The seventh and final patch is in Zaya, the Hosidius House to be more specific. I'm sorry if I say that wrong. The Zaya Houses, not that easy to say it turns out. The best and really the simplest way to get there is with Xerix Talisman. Xerix Glade is the option you want to pick. It's just a short run from there, and if you get 50% favor in this house, the patch can't be diseased, which is a very nice bonus. There are a few other items and things that you're going to want to know that I want to hit up before we go over a farming run. First thing, we have the magic Secateurs. I really don't know how to say Secateurs, so I say it kind of funny sometimes. I'm sorry about that. But these are obtained by finishing the Fairy Tale Part 1 quest. You can wield these in your herb run so they don't take up any inventory space, and they're going to increase your crop yield by 10%, meaning 10% more herbs. The next item is compost. Compost can be used on an empty weeded patch, and whatever you then plant in that patch will have a lower chance of disease. There's also super compost, which just provides an even lower chance for disease. There are a few ways of obtaining super compost, but they aren't very expensive, so it's very simple to just buy some. Next, we have the tool leprechaun. The tool leprechaun can store all of your tools, compost, and whatnot, which I don't really personally use, but it's a good way to stay organized if you don't want to do it from your bank. You can also use some crops on him, like your grimy herbs, for example, and he's going to note them for you. There is a tool leprechaun at every herb patch. Finally, let's bring up dead herbs. Herbs can become diseased at any point in the growing process. If you use a plant cure or the cure plant spell from the lunar spellbook on these before the end of the 20 minute cycle that they were diseased in, then they will not die. Otherwise, you're going to lose your seed. You can either go check your plants for disease manually, which is really not suggested in any way, or you can cast the lunar spell Geomancy, which requires 65 magic, to look at your farming patches. If you really don't want to do either of these things, or you don't have the requirements for them, your herbs might die, but it's it's likely that they won't because disease isn't very common, especially with super compost, which is highly suggested to use, so you can survive without checking on them. Let's move on to the herb run. This will be a sped up version of my current herb run. I only use five of the seven patches because, like I said, I haven't completed my arms big adventure or the elite Mauritania diaries. I also don't have the quickest teleport for every single location, so you'll see that even without the top notch equipment, you can still make some decent AFK cash with these herbs. I like to start off by using my Ecto Field to get to the patch east of Canifus. If you weren't growing any herbs in the patch, then you will likely need to weed the patch first, which only requires a rake. 
When the patch is empty, you can use your super compost, and then you can use the seed on the patch to plant it with the seed dibber. That's it. Now your herbs will begin to grow. If you're showing up to a patch that already has herbs grown in it, then the only difference is harvesting the herbs. If you don't have any magic secateurs, you're still going to need to bring regular ones to harvest. After you pick the herbs, you can compost and then plant. Don't forget to use your herbs on the tool leprechaun to note them for more inventory space. If you already had herbs growing, it might be smart for you to also bring a rake even though you don't plan on raking any weeds. There is a little bit of time between harvesting and planting that weeds can grow, and if you don't have a rake on you, that's kind of a pain. The order that you visit the herb patches really doesn't matter as long as you're using separate teleports. But if you decided to do something like Telly to Camelot for your Cath Catherby patch and then just walk to Ardoin, clearly you would have to do those in that order. There's really not that much more to farming runs, everybody. I don't have a perfect run by any means, but this should get you guys on your feet and ready to grow some herbs. To finish my run in no particular order, I use my Ardoin teleport for the Ardoin patch, and then my Camelot teleport for the Catherby patch. I use my house teleport to get to the Mounted Glory to teleport to Edgeville, and then run over, or not to Edgeville, to Draenor and run over to the Falador patch. And then I'm wearing a Xerix Talisman to teleport myself to Zaya's patch. I hope you you guys stuck with me there. That was a, a little bit of rambling on my teleports. But as long as you guys have an idea of how you're going to teleport to each of your patches. And you know how to plant and harvest your herbs. That's it. Farming is as simple as that. Let's get an idea of how much money that you're going to make from this. I'm just showing you a few of the general profitable herbs here. If you want more information on all of the herbs, you're going to have to do a little bit of research. As long as your herbs didn't die, they're going to give you a minimum of 5 herbs. And rarely bring in even more than 14 in one patch, but really you're going to get like 7 or 8. I think the average is actually 6.8 according to the wiki. But because of this yield, most herbs do give a profit, but these herbs tend to be higher up in the list. That's going to wrap it up for our RuneScape 2007 Herb Farming Guide, everybody. This should be all the information that you need to get started with your herb runs, but of course if I did miss anything, we can discuss that in the comments section below so we can all work our way towards becoming master farmers. Thank you everyone for watching today's video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to click on that like button and tell us what you enjoyed about it. If you're looking for some more RuneScape videos like this one, then be sure to join the cul-de-sac by subscribing for more. We will see you next time.